Hey, so you know how every time we do this podcast, we say you guys can't see this because this is a podcast. If that's always been confusing to you because you're like, why can't I see it? Boy, do I have some news to tell you. Dev and I are going to be doing a live podcast where you can see it because it is a podcast, a live podcast at Union Hall in New York on Sunday, August 21st. The show's at 8 p.m. Tickets are only eight bucks if you buy them ahead of time. And it's going to be a blast. We have Lane Moore and Janie Stolar as our guests. They're going to be so funny. And guess what? If you've pre-ordered Reductress's book, How to Win at Feminism, you get a free tote. And then, (laughs) this is crazy. Once you get the book in the mail, you could put it in the tote. Are you following what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't know. Like you can't see me because this is a podcast, but like I'm I'm visualizing a book inside of a tote. Oh my gosh! But I'll actually I'll show you on August 21st again. That's Sunday, August 21st at 8 p.m. at Union Hall in New York. Get tickets by going to www.unionhallny.com. Go to the event calendar. You're gonna find us. We're Reductress Presents Math Time, and buy some tickets there. And honestly, honestly, we can't wait to see you there, but you can't talk to us personally because we're celebrities. Thank you so much. Bye. You're listening to Sideshow Network. Open wide, it's mouth time. time with Reductress. I'm Quinn. And I'm Dev. And we're just two girls who share what our heads are thinking by moving our mouths. Blah. On today's episode, here's what we'll be mouthing about. It's rom-com week. We are turning our lives into rom-coms. We contemplate the horrors of a salad without kale. We play What Would Our Babies Look Like? And the former reality star turned mom entrepreneur, Kim, Kim Kim Cameron, is here to tell us all about her new line of scream teas. We're editors of Reductress, the only source for women's style, news, entertainment, life advice, inspiration, and smoothie reps. Hashtag blend it. So you guys can't see this because this is a podcast. It is a podcast. Div and I have been obsessed with making our own memes this week. Oh, yeah. We love memes now. I literally just heard of it for the first time the other day, but they are great. They're so funny. You have to be careful how much you do because it is a really potent herb. But honestly, as long as you have 80 to 120 yards of open, unobstructed space, you're going to have like the time of your life. Hmm. I think we're talking about different things because I'm talking about like fun shareable pictures and videos with captions that make you go haha oh no this shit will make you go haha okay it's really cool that you haven't accidentally died totally okay my favorite memes are the ones that are like old people in retirement homes getting surprised oh like with their family yeah yeah and they're like honestly like so old they just have no excitement in their lives and they just look so happy and scared when they get spooked by their fam bam i know i love it like they come in and they're like grandpa and he's like (gasps) And yeah, that's like a perfect impression. He's like, <gasps> he's like, <gasps> and then you're like, uh oh, is this going to go sour? But it doesn't. He's just like happy to yeah. see his family. No, I realized we were talking about different things. I was talking about it's sort of like salvia. Yeah. Um, you know, okay, so my favorite type of that kind of meme are like makeup tutorials where something is really sinister going on in the background. It's like my aesthetic. Oh my gosh, it really is. Yeah, like here's how you do a cat eye, but in the background, like there's her, like an actual cat. There's like an and actual it's mad. cat and it's mad. Yeah. So sinister. I've actually started um, making my own meme. Oh my God, really? Yeah. Let me see. Here it is. Huh. Yeah, this is um, this is just like a picture of you. Yeah, but it looks good, right? Yeah. Wait, is that Chab in the picture with you? What is he doing? He's like building me a piano. It's so annoying. That actually sounds really romantic, which brings us to this week's theme. Yep, yep. This week's theme is make Make your your life life a rom-com. You can't see this, but a rom-com is short for romantic comedy, which is one of the absolute best genres of movie books ever. Oh my gosh, yeah. Sometimes my life is like already like a rom-com because it gets really windy outside my apartment and then my bag like bursts open. It sends my latest scarf purchase everywhere and men just like have to stop and help me. Sometimes when my top blows up, my boobs, they do a little dance. No. Yeah. My boobs can dance because I'm like very toned, but also very floppy. So that's like a musical rom-com. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So like, and I never wear a bra because we're not on my boobs anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so funny that that's actually how I met my psychiatrist, Dr. Josh. You mean that guy who DJ'd your birthday party? Yeah, DJ, Dr. Josh. He's a really good listener and plays dope tunes. Mm, is he a real doctor? Uh, yeah, he has a prescription pad. Also, I'm falling in love with him, like in a rom-com. Aww. So for listeners' sake, let's just talk about some other ways to make your life a rom-com okay. befo- besides having like magical dancing boobs. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so first things first, you got to be in like a really bad place in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a... A place that needs a fix that only a guy can solve. Yeah, like a, a guy is bothering you and you hate him. But the problem is you need to learn to like what you hate about him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, totally. Another problem is that you can have is, like, a guy is bad to you and decide you decide that, like, men are no good. But then, like, another guy comes up and he, like, shows you that, like, no, actually all men are good and you were just kind of wrong before. Yeah, so you should just, I would say, let men be shitty to you to make your life more like a rom-com, Right. Mm, It sounds wrong, but I know it's right. Because the other thing is, a guy might, like, notice that you're sad and then be like, "Mm, hey, why don't you smile? You should turn that frown upside down. Isn't that how you met Chab? Mm, Sort of, except for he was doing a photo shoot in Central Park modeling for Burberry. And he, like, smiled at me. And I was like, stop smiling. Like, models are not supposed to smile. And then he asked me out for seltzer tea. What's seltzer tea? Oh, it's, like, a thing that models drink. It's basically just a mixture of seltzer and tea, but sometimes they dust the rim of the glass with cocaine. Oh, I love that. Yeah, you would. You know, that reminds me, I actually thought I saw you the other day because I saw an old lady screaming at a baby in a stroller. Oh, my God, that's so me. I'm that combo. You know, I am sick of people treating babies like they're special. There's just so much baby priv. Oh, oh my gosh. And speaking of baby priv, like, baby strollers do make good props if you're trying to make your life a rom-com. Oh, right. Like you accidentally let the stroller slide down a hill and into a lake and you and a stranger's guy start chasing it and jump in the water with all your clothes on. And then you look at each other and how ridiculous you look and you start laughing and you're like, ah, oh, forget about that baby. And then you walk away soaking wet, holding hands. Exactly. And that was Make, Make Your Life a Rom-Com. So how do you sleep last night? No, how do you sleep last night? Let's answer at the same time. One, two, three. Like a baby. Like a baby. Yeah. Well, okay. I don't know about you, but I was sleeping on my new Casper mattress. Oh my God. I was sleeping on my new Casper mattress. Oh my gosh. How good does it feel on your body? Um, It feels 100% amazing because a Casper mattress is an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price. It has just the right sink and just the right bounce. And it's made of two technologies, a hybrid of latex foam and memory foam. I mean, Two technologies? Yes, please. Uh, Sign me up. That's like having a Vitamix next to your Nespresso, which I do. Yeah, you are innovative. Um, So, God, I mean, like, that's all, like, the technical stuff about it. But, like, when I lay on my Casper mattress, Mm -hmm. it feels like I'm lying on top of the canopy in the Amazon jungle. And I'm just, like, surrounded by, like, lush birds and plush clouds and flush deeps and dink dunks and it just like it feels so good and like I slept amazingly and like I always have problems with my neck because I was a kung fu warrior for a month and like my neck is better now that's incredible yeah also I'm not allowed in the Amazon anymore that's true the good news is for people who are totes jealous of us because we have these amazing Casper mattresses we do and and people are they can order them online because they have a risk-free trial and return policy. You can try sleeping on a Casper mattress for 100 days, and there's free delivery and painless returns if for some reason you're an insane person and you don't like it, which honestly, honestly we can't date if you don't like it. We can't date. You can't date. You can't. And you're not you allowed to date, date anymore. You can't date anyone else. You can't date anyone. Okay. And the thing is, like, the cool thing about Casper is that, like, when you go to a mattress store, uh-huh. you're, like, trying it out for a second in sure, store. Sure. Mm-hmm. But, like, with Casper, you can try it for 100 days in your house. And 100 days is more than a couple seconds. It is. Te- science has proven. Um, I actually lived in a, a department store for 100 days once, but mm-hmm. that's because I worked there. And we really missed you, and we were scared about where you were. I was doing an investigative report on what it would be like to live in a department store for 100 days. Yeah. And I did sleep on their beds, but I will say that my Casper mattress is so much better than theirs. The best part about Casper mattresses is that they're made in America. It's just $500 for a twin-size mattress and $950 for a king-size mattress. Comparing that to industry averages, that's an outstanding price point. It is so insane, and I love, like beating like when people win yeah and casper's winning they're winning and you can win too with a special offer code we got for listeners of our show you can get 50 dollars towards any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash reductress 
and using promo code Reductress. Again, that's casper.com slash Reductress. Promo code Reductress. Reductress. Terms, Terms and conditions, conditions apply. apply. Uh, thanks. Our next segment, which is our favorite, is called The Mouthwash. This is a segment where we open our mouths wide, take a sip of a story from the Reductress website, switch it around, and get a taste of what's trending this week using our mouths. This week's story is these haunting photos show what salads look like without kale. Ugh. Oh, God. This was this really beautiful, poignant um, article was written by Kara Weinberger, and the images she's compiled are just heartbreaking. Yeah, they're spooky. They're, yeah, they're also scary. I mean, if someone served me a salad without kale, I would die of, like, liver failure or shock. Yeah, which you would do anyway. No. Well, maybe. Um, the photos in this piece are, are just like looking into the eyes of an orphan and the orphan is like, Hey, you're on drugs. This is a bad dream. And he turns into your doctor for a second. Then he turns back into an orphan and then you feel yourself falling off a cliff and then you wake up and you grab your bowl of bedside kale and just start shoving it in your mouth while crying. Seriously. Everyone in the office was like crying from reading this. So we actually had to whip up a bunch of kale smoothies really fast to replace all the electrolytes from the tears and girls were like chugging their smoothies and then they were like dying. Yeah, but then we were like, this calls for an impromptu Friday. Woo! Impromptu Fridays are when we just declare it to be Friday, even though it's like a Monday or something, and then we just head over to our in-office bar and start drinking. Yeah, um, and that's part of why we were voted best uh, places to work, places to work in, in 2013, 2013. by uh, by Bushwick, Bushwick Tablet, Tablet dot com. Dot com. Um, yeah. And we love them. Shout out. Shout out. Hey, guys. It's three years later, and we'd love an update. We would love to be back on there. Yeah, love, especially yeah. Uh, Monday through Thursday, our in-office bar doesn't open until like four. But on Fridays, the mixologist is there all day. Honestly, it's really lucky that we have him on call when there's an emergency, like such as when everyone's crying because there's no kale, or everyone's crying about puppies are cute, too cute, or everyone's period synced up, or um, we're watching this week's scandal while we give each other braids. Anyways. If you really want to get super woke about the state of non-kale salads and the future of our world if we do not grow more kale, you should just check out these photos. And honestly, no offense, but it's a cry-free zone in the comments, so please no crying. Thank yeah, you. we've been seeing a lot of cry comments. We have to our moderators are working overtime to delete them. Yeah, it's it derails our productivity. But you know, yeah, what? full as twenty-four I, hours minimum. But as I always say, today's tears are tomorrow's reductive headline. That is so true. Every beauty product testimonial I've written was spawned by a mini breakdown. Why do you think I've sampled so many different eyelash bleaching products? Well, you know what? It's like I always say. Today's tears are tomorrow's reductive headlines. You are always saying that. Yep. So is my pet goat for some reason, but I think that's because I tied a little um, a talk boy from the film Home Alone. I, bought, I have one. I taught it to his collar. Oh, my gosh. I'm so tiny. I've never seen that movie. You're too small to see I'm a movie. I'm too small to see it. Anyway, end of end of the day your pain is our gain and now we know which eyelash bleach creates the best space for dyeing your eyelashes back to dark burn logic lash cream mm -hmm. by love Lum. yeah and right and that wraps up the, the mouthwash mouth okay this next segment is our favorite and it's a game called what, what would our babies, babies look like? like this is where we name a celebrity and discuss what our babies would look like if we had babies with that person Woo. Okay, let's get started with Mario Lopez. Oh, he's so hot and he's not Dean Cain. Nope. Um, our baby would definitely have Mario's dark hair and vivacious energy and my family's predilection for addictive behaviors. Mm, that sounds great. Um, at least he'll look really cute during his intervention. Totes. Our baby would be like a baby star who has 10 albums and can also dance and is also super weird on Twitter oh to the point God. where you're like, are they smarter than everyone else or like way, way, like way, way dumber. dumber? Yeah. Oh my God. That's so on point. Thank you. Okay. Next up, uh, Seth Rogen. Oh my God. What oh, would our baby with Seth Rogen look we'd like? We'd have like an adorable little lovable loser. Oh yeah. I wonder whose body hair our baby would have. Hopefully his because mine is a mess. Okay. Uh, here's the next one. Zac Efron. Is he dead? What? No. He's not dead? No. I mean, I know you tried to kill him, but it did not work. It didn't work? It didn't work. Fudge. You know, I actually, despite our past differences, I would love this because our baby would look like a baby its entire life. Wow. That Okay, this would be weird, but uh, Zach and I are actually cousins. Oh, my God. I had no idea. I can totally see that. Yeah, Chab hates him because he kisses me on the lips. I wish you would stop telling me about times you've kissed your family. Uh, I'm an honest, open book, except for when I don't want to talk about something. 
That's true. Then you're a closed book. Then I'm then I'm locked shut. And you're like a tiny book. I'm so tiny. Put me in a pocket. You're like a little. Put me in, in a, a pocket. pocket. All right. Next up, Adam Levine. Oh, our baby would look and sound like a squirrel. Honestly, our little secret, but he's infertile. <gasps> oh, MG, how do you know? Oh, his roadies dealer told me. Also, we had lots of unprotected sex and cool. I never got preg. Amazing. Um, Paul Walker. Oh. I mean, I guess. I guess our baby would be dead. Yay! Yay! And that's all the time we have for What, what Would Our, our babies, babies Look Like? Okay, call me crazy, but You're when... crazy. Okay, <laughs> call me crazy, You're crazy. But... You're crazy. No, okay, just don't do not do anything for a second. Call me crazy, You're crazy, but one thing... Okay, this might just be a weird thing about me, but one thing that super matters to me is that You're things crazy. are easy to clean. Oh my god, I love cleaning. Yeah. Do you mean things like thinks? Uh, exactly. I can wash them exactly the same way that I wash my many high-end yoga clothes that I mostly wear to get lunch with my mom. That's right. The water in my apartment I'm squatting in just got turned back on, so I'm super psyched that thinks just need a rinse in cold water and then throw them in the wash on cold with no fabric softener, which is good because I don't even own fabric softener because I heard a rumor about it. I dry clean basically everything I own, so this is actually a really nice change. If you're a fan of this podcast, you know that you can save five bucks on your Thinks purchase and get free shipping on your first order with promo code Reductress. It's like every time you buy undies, you're doing us a favor. Yeah, it's almost like every time you buy undies, it's like it's almost like you're doing us a favor. Yeah, like we should be thanking you. We should be thanking you. So check out SheThinks.com and use promo code Reductress. Again, that's SheThinks.com. Promo code Reductress, Reductress. and you spell it S H E T H I N X dot com and use promo code Reductress. Reductress. Oh, and Dev? Yeah? You're crazy. I am crazy. Thank Thank you. you. Keeping in theme with our rom com week, we have someone on the podcast today who knows all about real life drama. Kim, Kim Cam Cameron is here. You probably know her as the woman who spitefully demolished Macy Houston's home on Bravo's Rich Moms of Dayton and from her incredible new venture, Scream Tea. Thank you so much for being here, Kim Cam. Mm, Hi. Hi. I'm I'm so happy to be here. Kim Cam, I just want to say I am so obsessed with RMOD. I watch it nonstop. I'm so addicted. It's so I'm addicted to a lot of things because I have an addictive personality. I'm an addict. I don't want to talk about it, but I love your show so much. And I love like how you always like start the drama. Like you'll always, you'll like start a fight or like participate in one or like. Mm -hmm. Uh, Drama is my middle name. (laughs) It is not. But uh, emotionally, it feels like my middle name. I, I love drama. You know what I mean? A catastrophe is uh, just me after I've left the room. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We heard, I read on the message boards um, that you were born during a, a lightning storm and that lightning struck the hospital and that's why you're so angry. Is that true? Um, that's what my publicist uh, wrote as my origin story. So sure, yes, yes. Uh, oh my god, wow. I love that your yes. publicist like controls like, the weather. Yeah, controls yeah. the weather. I mean, that's why I'm here, right? Yeah, yeah that <laughs> is why you're here. You're just you're such a special person on the show because you're incredibly brutal to the other women, but you have become a really good mom. You're Could such you, a good mom. Yeah, you're such a good mom. I know. I know I'm a great mom. And you're also an incredible businesswoman, and you mm-hmm. just have a new business venture called Scream Tea. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Well, you have to understand that Scream Tea is a niche market of teas for women who are just screaming all day long at anyone who annoys the heck out of them. It's mm-hmm. a line of teas yeah. to soothe your sore throat because people just make you want to scream at everybody. You just want to rip open their faces, but you can't. So you scream instead. So you scream, you scream instead. It's yes. legal to scream. It's legal to scream. Scream all day long. But you can't legally rip someone's face off. That's, no. And that's actually a bit of, that's a law trivia bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is unfair because like screaming hurts you. But like tearing someone's face off, you could do that without really hurting yourself. Yes, you absolutely could. But the real message I'm trying to send is... After you scream, take care of yourself by giving yourself some soothing tea. Like right. Open up your throat to possibility. Yeah. So last season, you and Drippy got in a huge fight at wine restaurant. Um, 
which is the restaurant that your husband co-owns with. Yeah, that's a, it's the beer bar. Yeah, it's the beer bar. They yes. only serve beer, but in wine glasses. But it's called wine restaurant. Yes, it's a very specific niche. Uh, it provides a little class to Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, so, yeah. You and, so the best thing about this restaurant that I love and I think really helps the show is that you can just get in these brawls and like huge fights um, and you can't get kicked out because it's technically yours. Um, what do you say to like Drippy now? Like she, you guys still see each other or like, Oh you- yeah. I mean, I see that bitch at the grocery store and, um, oh. I, I will slice her tires. I shit in her mailbox. What? Oh, wow. Yes, you- I shit in her mailbox. And she has a mailbox on the second floor, which was yep. a huge part of season two, episode three, Drippy's mailbox. Yeah. Yes. How did you get up there? Well, you have to understand, I work out seven days a week. You are so oh toned. Gosh, so I know, toned. I know. Um, and the only way to make sure your shit is tight is to make sure you, you leave. Are you telling me that you launch it from the ground floor yes. into the second floor mailbox? And oh it, when I mean my shit is tight, I can pack it i have a pressurized system that puts it into a a capsule that's encoded by gelatin that way when it actually hits the mailbox there's a good explosion i think about my drama you know what i mean i don't you don't get to be me so good you're my dream guest without a little bit of forethought and preparation yeah oh my so you're, you're involving modern day science and at-home vitamin mm-hmm. kits mm-hmm. into uh, your fecal uh, harassment yes okay. i i have to ask you about my favorite kim cam moment on the show which is uh you famously retaliated against frenemy macy houston by sending a demolition crew to her house and that ultimately got you kicked off the show but you also kind of won because you demolished Macy's entire mansion. When did you, how did you come up with that idea? Well, I, I actually keep, uh, you know how some people have dream diaries? Oh, yes. yes. I have a, a, a hate diary that I write. <gasps> I love that. I love that. That's so nice. Yes. And I have a list of different things I'm going to do to people. And I scale it. There's a one through five scale of, uh, you've done me real wrong and uh you've just annoyed me a little bit like poop it's a little bit like it's annoying but it's fine but i took macy's house down yeah yeah because she she shouldn't run her mouth yeah what what did she say that had made you feel feel so upset yeah it had been off camera yeah she legally i think that you know it wasn't allowed to be shown because there was some graphic imagery i mean first off uh Macy said something about she said something about my dead grandmother. Oh my, oh god. my gosh. And what did she say? What'd she say? She she referenced uh Jim Crow law, which I thought was very unfair and oh. off topic. That's actually yeah, that kind sounds of fucked completely up. It's, irrelevant. It's actually completely irrelevant. Because you guys famously were upset about who's taking the yogurt cups from the fridge and that just seems completely irrelevant to the situation yes and then it turned into the yogurts it was a very convoluted i'm just gonna go out on the record and i think macy's unstable wow wow and me demolishing her physical house is a great example of how her inner house is coming down she's crazy yeah. Wow. Do you think maybe like her talking about that had anything to do with her being like a professor of American history at Dayton Community College? Like, do you think maybe that's why she was talking about Jim Crow laws? I don't care why she was talking about sure. it. Because yeah. I, I do. I heard that it was in a lecture hall. Yeah. No, no, no. It was absolutely in a lecture hall and she was given a lecture at the time. But you don't say that shit anywhere near me. I'm in the room. Kim Cam is in the room. Right. Kim's because you room. did go back to college for a brief period of time. Yes. And she yes. was your teacher, which was such an interesting power dynamic because, you know, you're also friends. Yes. I mean, at one point I thought I can teach African-American history and I actually interrupted the lecture and I had a PowerPoint presentation ready to go because people need to learn some shit. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. We love PowerPoint. And honestly, we love to learn some shit. Okay. And sorry, just to like harp on the rumor stuff, but like, did you really throw your dog out the window or was that a rumor started by Taripa? Taripa? absolutely started that rumor i didn't throw no dog i threw a cat cats land on their feet i have no problem saying right now i would never throw a dog out of a window but it was your cat that is famously does not have feet no my cat absolutely does not have feet yeah i just wanted to make sure uh 
I call her Santa Claus. It's a play mm-hmm. on the fact that she doesn't have feet. I follow yeah. her on Instagram. She's so disabled. I love it. I know. And she has more followers than me. That's messed up. That's I why know. you threw her out. I know. And she's. St- I wanted her to also have that positive cat self-esteem by landing on her feet. She did not. Right. She dislocated one of her uh, vertebrae. But you know what? Oh my God. Santa Claus is, is okay. And she's, yeah, she's. I've I've also followed her Instagram and like she wrote you a thank you note saying like thanks for teaching me Mm -hmm. to not be so different than everyone else I mean it was me writing it sure because cats can't write a letter but but I trust that you as a cat owner know what your cat is thinking which is this was the right thing and I just I this is just from my own research but I do think that's the only time you've ever um accepted someone's apology Mm mm-hmm yeah what was that like i'm gonna cry oh my gosh god she looks so angry though Uh, um, all my emotions start with screaming so you gotta hold on that's okay Okay, yeah Ah! Mm. oh my gosh wow she just keeps punching her own heart over and over again Mm. Ooh. She's taking out a thermos now. Mm. Mm. Oh, I bet that's some scream tea. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Oh no, it's bees. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, oh no. Oh. Ow. Ow. God damn it. Motherfuckers. Ow. 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 Shit. Ow. Ow. Motherfucking bees. Kim Kim, wow. why? Kim Kim, why Kim, did you do why? that? Why Kim, did you Kim, do why? that? Why did you do that? Kim? Ow. Kim, Kim, Kim's got to learn how to feel, okay? And yeah. I'm, I'm in this process right now where uh, <sighs> bees are a metaphor for me. They enter a room and everybody gets scared. Everybody gets scared. Yeah. And they should be scared because I will kill you okay. if yeah. you fuck with me. That's actually, that's one of your catchphrases. Yeah, I will, I will kill, kill you, you if you, you fuck, fuck with me. me. Yeah, I have a teddy that has that embroidered on the anus. I have mm-hmm. to confess, I have your entire dining room set and, you know, I got them so that they all spell out. I have one for each word, one plate for each word. I will kill you if you fuck with me. And it's nice and flexible mm-hmm. because sometimes I just will give Jab the fuck plate. And then he'll be like, ooh, is this a sign? And I'm like, yeah, shut the fuck up. I'm channeling Kim Cam. And I just feel so empowered. Mm-hmm. I actually got a tattoo that reminds me of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, my God. Yeah, it, it does remind me of that because it does say I will kill you if you fuck with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. beautiful. But mm-hmm. like it's sort of a Celtic font. Yeah, no, yeah. it is a Celtic font. I'm actually 116th Celtic. Oh, wow. my God. Mm-hmm. How is that different than Irish? It's I don't just, know. I don't know. Are you questioning me? My heritage? Are you questioning me. my heritage? Oh my god! Do you know where I'm from? I'm getting. What's your home. name, white girl? What's oh, your oh name? Oh my god! I love this. I don't so know much. your name. I, will I love fucking this. Slice. Oh my god! She's putting a table gently on top of me. I will give you a badass haircut. Oh my god! Could you? Yeah. Give actually, me a crank. Actually, I could. Can I give could. me a crank. I will give you a crank. Thank oh you. my god! Oh my god! This is like a behind the scenes, but I'm in the scenes. I love this so much. We are such huge fans We're of this. We're such huge fans of you. Guilty it's pledge. It's, oh my God. Yeah, it's a guilty pledge, but it's also just a normal pledge. Also, normal. I was just wondering, how has your business helped with your anger, if it's helped at all? Well, you have to understand, my teas are so refreshing that like every tea is blended to make sure it takes care of a different part of you. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, my teas really serve like I have an emotional side to me when I'm in pain and Mm -hmm. Uh they just remind me to grab my root chakra which is my pussy and Mm -hmm. like really connect to it you're grabbing it right now yeah it feels good and I'm not gonna lie I might uh, oh she's she scooted she scooted a bit Uh uh-huh I, I also have another question for you, which is you're a very unique presence on uh, RMOD because, you know, it's it's for rich moms of Dayton. And when you started on the show, you were neither a mother nor a resident of Dayton. So how did you get on the show initially? I'm rich. Oh. oh. Yeah. So you just really needed one out of the three. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm actually uh, independently wealthy. Uh I invested in Google by accident very early. By accident? By accident. Yeah, I thought it was like uh, Googs. What's, like, what's Googs? Googs? Like, I thought like Goop. 
Goop? What's I, I, I don't know. I just sounded like goop. It just sounds goop sounded. makes sense to me. And so I just, you know, sometimes can't sometimes you gotta just put money and trust that the Lord is watching you. Oh, oh my gosh, Kim wow. Kim, that's amazing. The Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And so and it, it apparently was Google. I thought it was goose, goop, whatever. I you know wow. what? I just and then I had millions of dollars and which is how you know I bought my first child and yes. yeah, I bought my first child. And how is she doing? Are you going to name her at all? Yeah. No, not yet. I'm waiting for like a spin-off for that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I name that baby. Yeah. Well, because you just finished up your your third spin-off, Kim mm-hmm. Cam cleans up and it's, you know, it was really interesting cuz it it almost seemed like it could have been just a private moment of you just getting ready every day but it was just you just kind of cleaning up like cleaning up yep your your face in your home and the title indicates that maybe it would have been you like cleaning up your act but not not at all yeah or even like you're helping like compulsive hoarders no. like clean yeah. up their houses no it's all about or even me. like trying to just once and for all get all the clouds out of the sky yeah yeah no get no, them no. Away. Clean up Yep. I mean, upward. Get out. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that is an important issue and I'm gonna start a charity about it like once I have the time. But could you have your publicist control clouds, please? Um it's a publicist. What did I say? Oh my gosh, she's gonna yell. It's at you a again. publicist. Do you know what a publicist does? Wait, That's why I'm here. She's yelling I don't at me. know what a publicist does. I don't want to yell at you because you want it. <gasps> she's yelling at you about not wanting to yell at you. You don't you don't need to be yelled at. Give it to me. Give it to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're you dumb. Your face is dumb. And <laughs> she, said, and I, she said her other catchphrase ah, to you. Your face is dumb. Face I is will dumb. kill you because your face is so dumb. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. I love- Wait, could you mind if we just sing your club anthem for a second? Yeah. Please do. Mm-hmm. Your face is dumb. Your face is dumb. I'm going to kill you because your face is dumb. Your face is dumb. Your face is dumb. I'm going to kill you because your face is dumb. Oh, so, and it's like that over. Oh, my God. Literally, the first time that I almost let Chab finger me in a club was to that song just because I was like, what would Kim Cam do? That song came out last month. Ooh, only one finger? You got to get fucked. That is such good advice. You got to, like, just get it. I mean... I don't take one, you got to take it whole hog and anybody just be open-minded. That's how I got to be me. Yeah. I'm so curious about your husband, Helicopter Jones. Um, Heli Jones. Heli Jones. I know he's trying to soften his image. Um, so he um, is a helicopter man, which is his title. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it like having a husband who's always in, in the a sky. helicopter? I mean, and do you think he'll ever come down? He may not come down and I don't care. You know what I mean? Like... The reason I call him Heli yeah. is because if you say helicopter, he just takes his junk out and swings it. Oh, wow. And he that, thinks you're asking him to swing his dick around, but actually helicopter. you're just saying yeah. his name. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's bad parenting, if I may say so, just to name your, your kid helicopter. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's why I'm giving my baby no name. Yeah. No name baby. No name baby. Um, which is not a but, name, but it's you a have, placeholder. But you Sounds have given funny. your baby a catchphrase. Yeah. And that catchphrase is, get the fuck out of my fucking way. Yeah. And I was just wondering, for giving a baby such an aggressive catchphrase and already tattooing it on the bottom of her right foot. Mm-hmm. What type which of looks incredible. Do, it looks I mean, so cute. I what? would do her lower back, but she's growing too She's growing at this point. Her feet See, are you're a good same. mom. And that is the thing about you that's just so admirable but what kind of life do you want for your daughter i want her to celebrate herself every day oh my god that's beautiful so spiritual and om shanti yes i want her to celebrate herself every day i want to have anything she wants and get it any way she wants i want to put her in the best schools yeah yeah i have an arsenal in south dakota what Mm. it's like a militia that ultimately will serve all of her needs if anyone messes with her wow are they also babies or are they grown up oh no they're grown-ups but they are uh half of them are pregnant ready to produce babies that will serve under my daughter Okay, oh so they're God. not babies now, but they, no, but they, they will serve but they under have one my day daughter. There will be babies. But one day there will be babies. So she'll have to wait a little. Honestly, I just like love reality TV. Uh, me too. I actually was thinking the other day about the episode where someone broke your leg on the last day of a silent retreat, so that you would scream and lose the retreat. Uh, well, how did it, it feel to how, lose? How did it feel to lose the retreat? 
Also, how did it feel to have your leg broken? Oh, yeah, also that. Losing the retreat was, uh, I'm not going to say that that is my defining moment as a human being. No. No. But it comes right before motherhood. Mm Mm-hmm. Which you purchased. I, I, I bought motherhood, but I cannot buy back my leg. I mean, I still got it, but I cannot buy back the emotional so, yeah, pain. The original yeah. leg. Yeah. And Someone owns it. And um, as a result, I mean, I got arrested that night. I got straight up uh, arrested. Uh, <gasps> you did. Marseille. Marseille, uh-huh. who broke my leg. Yeah. I called. <sighs> I know some people. I won't call them terrorists, but <laughs> terrorists. And they showed up at her house. You called terrorists? I wouldn't call them terrorists, but let's have No, but a, you called them? Let's have a placeholder on name. On the phone? Yeah. I called them. Yeah. I got... I know a lot of people. You know I know of, everybody. You know a lot of I know everybody. Oh That's God. impressive. There are a lot of people to what know, a, and you know everyone. I know everybody. We, the, we're friends now. <gasps> yeah. Oh, that means she's going to yell. She's gonna yell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Watch your back. 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 Everybody, watch your back. Everybody, watch your back. Watch your back. This is a time to watch your back. I'm sorry, I got carried away. I love your album. Your album is incredible. Thank you. And you're, you are just, you have so many businesses, and it's so incredible. What is, what's your favorite business you've started? Um, one of my favorite uh, businesses is Scratch Her Eyes Out Nail Care. <gasps> Scratch Her Eyes Out Nail Care. Yeah. And what's you, that for? Um, it's, you know, it's about nails mm. being strong enough, not just d- gel tips, but being strong enough to scratch a bitch's eyes out. Which is also illegal. But uh, if I you mean, wanted to. Mm-hmm. When you're in my restaurant, it's legal. <laughs> When you're in a wine restaurant? It's a sovereign. My restaurant. It is a sovereign nation. You guys did secede Mm -hmm. from the rest of Dayton. Yes. I'm telling you right now, we uh, have our own system of government. Mm -hmm. I am queen and uh, I am the prime minister. Wow. That's incredible. I am the prime minister. So you're both the symbolic uh, ruler of it and also the Yeah, you're the figurehead and and the chief of state. The puppet and the shadow. Yes. Um, So... I'm not a puppet, though. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm yeah. a marionette. <gasps> oh, no. So much more sophisticated. Because mm-hmm. you're scarier and you're more expensive. Yes. Um, how do you find... And also, you had strings coming out of you everywhere. You really... You're so toned, it hurts. Yeah, yeah. string theory. <laughs> <laughs> do you, what? Is that a new cat string theory? Mm, it's a part of my business ventures. Neil deGrasse Tyson and I hang out sometimes when Helly's up in the air. Um, I actually... <laughs> Have a yeah. string business. Oh yeah, and it's very can, can, tiny can string strings. Strings? It's all about very tiny strings that manipulate the universe. Wow, oh Kim Cam, that's <laughs> that's very so advanced. That's so you are literally trying to brand and sell the fibers of the universe. I am the fibers of the universe. Oh my god, oh my I know. Can- everything new catchphrase you heard it here first i, I am, am the fibers, fibers of, of the universe, universe. so good let's talk about scream tea so your people sent us some samples and we've been sipping on it so much usually i only like to drink things if they come from something called the grandmother vine i'm but- incredibly protective of my throat in general ask everybody but especially chab and i just have felt so comfortable with letting scream tea just glide down my throat and making me finally for once in my life feel safe so um, we all have our different flav- favorite flavors. Favorite flavors. Um, so uh, my favorite one is uh, Hubby Wubby Mint. And this is for people who scream at their husbands. But, you know, you actually put a little spin on Hubby Wubby Mint because you actually don't have your own husband. I so, don't. But you scream at other people's husbands? I oh, do. do. Yeah. I am usually screaming at other people's husbands. Like probably like four to eight hours of my day is spent like saying like, you told me you'd leave her or like, I t- trusted you or like we already signed the lease Mm -hmm. or like just kill them start over um and it like really takes a tone it takes a tone on my throat um and I I really love hubby wubby because like you know these men need to be told that they can't just like mess with young women's minds they even if even if I'm the one who's like following them and like changing my hair to look like their wife I've like 
been loving Big Boat Throat Coat, which is, of course, for a tea for people who scream about how it's their boat that everyone's on right now, because I'm actually doing a new initiative in my relationship where I'm terrified of getting accidentally pregnant. And so if I do get pregnant, I want to be able to tell my future child, who I'm not going to name because you didn't name your kid, that she w- or he was conceived on a boat. So I've bought a boat and I only F on the boat so that if I beca- if I conceive a child on the boat, then I have a good story for later. Because- yeah. And the boat's in dry dock. So you guys can never have sex. Mm, mm. That's a good, that's but a good I, one. But then I'm always, but people are always like getting close to the boat. And I'm like, this is my boat. And also like, are you, do you think my boyfriend's cute or not? Because jealousy fuels my relationship. And they're like, we work in a dry dock. Live his lawn. Yeah. Uh, and I, I have to tell you, I'm announcing a new tea that is going to be my personal <gasps> favorite. Oh my gosh. Scooping. And it's get your chai old together. <gasps> and it's for screaming at other people's kids. Oh my Who God. can't handle them damn selves. Yes. And um, here's some free samples. <gasps> oh my God. Um, yes, it's a black you. tea, so sassiness that. is included. Good. Uh, I love sassy. Yeah, it's a super sassy tea. It's That's... black chai. Oh my god, wow. I love this. I love it because this reminds me of season one, episode two, where you yelled at Drippy's kid and to you said, stop get your child, get your to child get together. together. Because yeah. he has He actually muscular. had ripped off one of his arms and you were like, put him back together. That was actually a really, really sad episode. It was very upsetting. I mean, he's alive, so not that sad. Yeah. That's true. Not that sad. But yeah. at the time, you guys didn't know he was going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. I, sure. A producer told me, it's all right. Oh, wow. Produ- Producers know. Can I ask you something? Uh-huh. Was the producer you looking at yourself in a mirror? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I EP'd it. And you know. Right. Of course. You got to get that EP cred. The truth starts with me. Wow, that's wow. another one of your many catchphrases. Mm, the know. truth starts with me. And the second half of that catchphrase is, and it ends when I say it does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, yeah, this is so good. And the, is this true that you originally thought of hubby wubby meant um, because Hallie is just so far away that you're always screaming at him anyway just to communicate? Yeah, I spend about um, 30 minutes a day screaming into the air, um, just assuming he'll hear me. I have a question about Heli, which is, does he have to fly so high up or is that a choice? Like, because he's so like, it almost feels like too, like dangerously high. Yeah, for a I feel like helicopters should like, really they only shouldn't go... be that high. But like, yeah, he's like going there and I'm wondering, is he a, like a daredevil like you or is he just like very bad at he living actually... up to his namesake? Well, he has a restraining order against uh the world the earth the state of wisconsin and um other parts of the united states and you know when you have a flying restraining order you actually have to fly high but i'm like who cares i if you look at me right now i got an ankle bracelet on didn't stop me from coming here oh it should have though wow no yeah but it didn't i'm here yeah, I'm I mean, here. I, I'm, I, actually, is, I actually have five guns on me right now. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. This is actually the best day of my life. I'm like, I'm scooting just over and over and over. I'm watching her scoot and it, I can't because I told myself I wouldn't unless I was on a boat. But it, I don't know. Any, anything can be anywhere. You can get pregnant anytime. Yeah. People, people don't know that. You, and you can just buy one. Buy yeah, something. You can. You can just buy a kid. People buy forget a about that. You yeah. can buy a kid. And you don't even have to buy one from this country. You can get yourself a real pretty looking one. What's your favorite like uh ethnicity? Australian. Horse. All right. Get get one of both, right? Yeah. Just buy it. Okay. This has been so amazing talking to you. We were hoping you would also play a game with us. I'm a I'm a win. Sure. Oh my god. Yeah. We love that. Okay, so Kim Cam, um, we would love for you to play this game, which is called Tiki Talkie Clock. Okay, so we're going to play our Tiki Talkie Clock ticking sound, and you have to try to beat the challenge we give you within a certain number of talks. Does that make sense? First question. In seven talks, name all the cast members of Long Island Medium Season 2. Jermaine, Hero, Nikito, Farts, nicknames, Leonard. You did it. Yeah. Wow. Those are all, I know. I know I did it. I can do anything. Wow. That's amazing. So good. I can do anything. Okay. Div, this one's for you. Uh, and it's a hard one. So you have 30 talks. Um, if, oh, you know what? Actually, this is, this is also for Kim Cam. Oh, that's okay. 
you can totally take anything. Yeah. This it's is mine for, now. This, she just, I love this. I was going to give it to you, but she lifted three of the five guns. And so I'm going to actually give this no, one this to Kim No, this is Pam. like season four, episode 30, where she... Um, That's she, called the, the One with Many Guns. The One yeah. with Many Guns, where you walked into a, uh, the another um, uh, fort, uh, an army fort, and said, this is mine now. Yeah. yeah. And, they, mm-hmm. and they gave it up to you. They did. I know, because... Uh, I want what I want. And you and I were either going to get tattoos after this or I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. She only has a few tattoos, so that's scary. Um, okay, so this is the hard one. So you have 30 talks. If your show airs on Tuesday and again on Friday and again on Saturday and we watched it every time, how many times did we hear you scream? So you can you can use whatever tools you want if you want to use a piece of paper or something like that. And you've got 30 talks. Mm. You can just kind of list aloud the different screams you had. Okay. I read via my throat how long I scream. I had a guttural scream. I screamed at a baby. No, three babies. I screamed at a piece of fruit. Screamed at my mom. No, that wasn't my mom. That was just some lady on the street. Ooh, I'm going to have to guess about 9,600. But after it was edited down, it was about 201. Wow. Wow. That's correct. That's correct. Yes, you lose a lot in editing. People don't know that about reality TV. But I actually you... literally thought that that's just the, a reality TV episode is real time. That's what's happening. And you just kind of jut from place to place immediately no. and you have like technology that we don't have no really i no. will scream at you right now <gasps> no i will scream Quinn, right keep now. insisting that you're I, right no I'm, I'm right i'm right you are wrong <gasps> you are wrong are you acting stupid right now in my face I don't just, know. are you acting oh stupid yeah <laughs> You're bleeding. How you like to bleed? I like your blood. I collect blood. I have a vial of blood around my neck right now. You you don't think I won't slice you? Slice me. No. Okay, now you want to. No, I can't. Oh, damn it. I meant to oh say gosh. don't slice me. Take a picture of me. Oh I my look God. amazing. You look so cute. I'm gramming it. Grammy. That's where I send it to my friend right. Graham, who prints large size canvas photos. He's incredible. Oh, my God. You're like literally making our day. Um. Okay, so, um, Quen, this one's for you. Oh, my gosh. In nine talks or less, tell me who has won the most gold medals for splintering. Quick clue. Splintering is when you dive through a pommel horse and it is not an official Olympic sport. Okay. Um, who's won the most gold medals? Is it, is it Barf McGarg? No, I think it's Lance Frawl. That's correct. Oh, my gosh. I love his costumes. He wears these, like, floral jumpers with rufflets. We love watching Olympic mistakes. Yeah, it's like... I mean, obviously, all of your shows are our favorite shows, but Olympic Mistakes is definitely another mm-hmm. fave of ours. Mm-hmm. It's once every four years. I'm actually collaborating with them the next Olympics. <gasps> yeah. That's good. Oh are gosh. you going to be the mistake causer? Um, no, I'm the judge and the mistake causer. Oh. I'm everything. <laughs> oh, my God. I am everything. I am your God. I am your nightmare. I am your devil. I love when she I yells. I love it. I okay, love it. Dev, this one's for you. Okay. Okay. Count the number of talks in these next eight talks. One, two. Okay. 20, 20. Carry the five. I fucked Bill Clinton in his butt. Um, um, I'm sorry. You're out of time. Uh, eight talks. Yeah, actually, but that was correct. Oh my God. Thanks. Oh. Oh my gosh! Well, that was playing. That was that was it. That, that was, was playing. Played. That was That's playing. That's what playing I was. I won, right? Yeah, you okay. got seventeen talks, and you won because, and you actually got won this talkie clock that we've covered in rhinestones. Mm. Oopsie, she smashes it. Oh, she smashes it. Fuck this shit! Ah! I want diamonds. I live my life for diamonds. I'm covered in diamonds right now. I actually am wearing a diamond crusted thong and my butthole's bleeding. I don't care. I can see. I don't care. It is. I know I'm bleeding a a pool of my blood, but it's because I'm classy. Oh my gosh. Classy. It looks like there are red and blue lights outside of our studio because I think that you did, you were not supposed to leave because of your ankle bracelet. So that I call it my escort. Oh yeah. Oh my my God. It's a helicopter. It's amazing. I wonder if it's not a cop car. It's a helicopter. It's a helicopter. Helicopter. It's not a cop car. It's a helicopter. Is that where they call them cops? Oh my gosh. I love that. Okay. This is our absolute favorite segment of the show, and it's actually our last segment of the show, and it's called Spill It. Spill It. Where we talk about all the cool stuff we have coming up. So 
Uh, I am plugging my apartment cooling because it is that time of year. That's right. That's where you're moving and you're turning on the ACs. Yep. Um, cool. So I'm going to be plugging some tea readings that I'm doing at the dumpster behind Whole Foods next week. Um, oh. And I will be using Scream Teas. Um, so come on down. I'll read your future. And I'll be in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I have my baby drive. I'm looking for a third baby right now. That's right, to drive wow, you. To drive yeah. you around. And um, uh, this will be a great grooming process for a baby. So if you have a baby that you don't need right now. I will now, literally find one for you. Uh, yeah. It would my, be my honor. And, I mean, it, you have to pay me about $10,000 and then we all right for, for a little bit. But um, so my baby drive is coming up this Saturday. And, and that's where you line up a bunch of cars. Put yeah. The babies in the seat. Yeah. Yes, and seat. you see which one breaks out of its seat first. Yeah. And, and that's I, the baby you want. Yeah. And and proportionality. There's a metrics I've created. Mm. Uh, here you can see in my Excel sheet. This looks like oh. an old fashioned um, sort of like diagram of what they thought um, babies looked like. Yep. Yep. It is. They it's actually from. 1892. Wow. Wow, that was a different time then. It was different. It just says room rooms. Yes. It says uh, vapors. Yeah. And do you have any final plugs, Kim Cam? Oh, I've been listening to this bitch ass, uh, awesome, wonderful podcast called The Soul Glow Project. I mean, it celebrates a little more positivity than I normally like. And like they don't curse or nothing. Whoa. And they're really respectable. That's different for you. I know. It's what I do when I'm taking a shit. I listen to it when I'm going number two squeezing my dukes wow i i'm gonna do that now and listeners you guys can do this too you can listen to the soul Glow project um who hosts that um you can uh find us on the npr one app you can also find us on itunes stitcher and everywhere else i love that i love it you guys can shit while listening to it or not it's up to you and that's the kim cam way that's our show. Thank you so much for listening. Tune in next week where we all wear crop top coats. Crop top coat. Crop top coat. This was Mouth Time with Reductress, brought to you by the Sideshow Network. Written by Beth Newell, Sarah Papalardo, Nicole Silverberg, and Anna Dresen. Special thanks to our producer, Maria Spertolozzi, and our guest, Keisha Zoller. Check out Reductress.com for more and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.